Until recently, cutting the cord meant making a lot of sacrifices. There just weren't a lot of TV shows to watch, and if you were a sports fan, well, you were kind of out of luck. But that's all changed. And now, if you want to quit cable or satellite in favor of internet-delivered TV, there's never been a better time. But like all things, there's a right way, and then there's the not-so-easy way. Here's how to cut the cord the right way. Okay, step zero. Before you do anything else, you need to make sure your internet connection can handle streaming video in your home. It takes a lot of bandwidth, and the more people that are streaming TV shows, the more bandwidth you're going to need. So, the best thing to do is to hop online and test your internet connection. I like testmy.net for this. If you're going to use a wired connection, go ahead and plug in. Otherwise, test wireless. See what your Wi-Fi network can handle. You want to see at least 5 megabits per second for a single Netflix stream. And if you're going to be doing more than that, then you want more bandwidth. I have about 50 megabits per second service at my home, but during peak hours, that drops to around 25 or 30. And that gets me about two to three streams at a time in my home. And it's important that you test during peak times too, because if you don't, you may be counting on bandwidth you're not actually getting when you wanna watch TV. Okay, so if your internet's set, the next step is to choose an HDTV antenna. This is an inexpensive channel master model, costs about 10 bucks, and in town it works pretty well for us. If you need something more advanced, we've got an entire guide on choosing the best HD antenna for you. An antenna is going to get you all of your local over-the-air network stations, and then a whole bunch of other stuff that you probably won't ever watch. But you'll be surprised how many channels are available. You'll get ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox, CW, uh, and a number of other stations. A lot of these stations are going to be sub-channels, so you've got your main ABC station, but then under that you've got a bunch of other sub-channels playing old classic stuff like, well, we got Superman here. Believe it or not, here in Portland, one of the sub-channels is Antenna TV. Smart TVs have gotten really good in the past few years, but when it comes to streaming video, nothing beats a dedicated set-top box, and for our money, the best one out there is the Roku 3. It's a hundred bucks, about the size of a hockey puck, it's loaded with features, and you're gonna love using this thing. You can hardwire it via Ethernet if you want to, but there is Wi-Fi built inside, and then it connects to your TV via HDMI. If you want extra storage, we've got a micro SD slot here, and on the side there's a little USB port so you can share photos and music that way. One of the best things about the Roku 3 is its remote. It's extremely simple and easy to use. If you turn it on its side, it acts like a game pad. It actually is a motion remote so that you can use it kind of Wii style if you want. But the best part is this headphone jack here, which lets you listen to the TV's audio wirelessly so you don't disturb others in the room. It even has onboard volume control. Here's Roku's interface, and it's laid out very simply. It's easy to navigate. You have access to thousands of apps, or Roku calls them channels, but you only have to add the ones you want, so you never have a more cluttered list of channels than you actually need. My favorite Roku feature, though, is its search. It will let you search for a actor, a TV show, or a movie, and then show you not only where you can get it, but how much it's gonna cost you. We're searching for House of Cards. Netflix subscribers get it for free, of course, uh, but you can also get it from Amazon, MGO, or Vudu, and uh, it'll even tell you how much that's going to cost you. And that leads us into our next step. Pick your streaming services. For our money, the best three out there are Netflix, Amazon, and Hulu Plus. Netflix brings you some of the best original programming like House of Cards and Orange is the New Black, although Amazon is quickly catching up. With Amazon, there's a little bit of crossover with Netflix, but there's tons of kids programming here that you won't find at Netflix. And like I said, they're starting to develop their original programming too. And finally, Hulu. Hulu is where you're going to get all of your network TV shows that you just can't miss. You do have to wait for a day, sometimes two, to get at them, but if you don't have a DVR solution, Hulu is great for going back and catching up on your favorite series or maybe starting a new one. For everything you can't get from those three top apps, there's Sling TV. It's 20 bucks a month, it doesn't require a commitment, and it brings you a bunch of traditionally cable or satellite-only channels that you weren't able to get online before. Arguably the most important of these channels is going to be ESPN, which really is your only option for 24-7 sports. 
Now Sling TV is brand new and they're still adding channels, but for somebody who's really not sure if they want to make the switch, Sling TV is probably going to seal the deal. If you want to learn more about Sling TV, we've got a full review you can check out. Pretty soon we'll see more services like Sling TV, possibly something from Apple. And as a matter of fact, HBO and Nickelodeon are both going standalone streaming, so you can add just those channels to your Roku and watch them whenever you like. No matter how you like to mix it up, if you stick to the basic principle of combining over-the-air TV with excellent streaming hardware over a solid internet connection with the best streaming services, you can make the transition from cable or satellite to streaming TV without missing a beat.